Hey guys, just got back from a bunch of fall touring. Great to be uh, in town for a quick minute here. I uh, was out with Chris Bodie a lot. Just finished a, a little run with Bria Skomberg in Mexico, a great festival there. And I uh, did a bunch of my own trio and quartet shows as well. It was so great seeing so many of you guys out at shows this fall. And uh, we're going to be announcing winter and spring tour dates really soon. So make sure to check that out uh, upon release. But today we're going to get into some simple licks that you can learn on minor chords. A lot of what we talk about on this channel gets really deep and gets into some really advanced territory. This is just going to be some nice, easy stuff that anybody can learn. A big part of whatever you're working on, if you want to get better at improvising, should always be language and vocabulary. So hopefully this will give you some good content to practice and internalize. And these should all be phrases that you can get down pretty fast. If you want to get a download of the sheet music, for these phrases. It is part of a new ebook that we have out. It's called 50 Easy Minor Licks. That PDF package ebook download has all the phrases written out for you in all 12 keys plus backing tracks in all 12 keys. So that's gonna be a great resource for anyone who wants to download it. It also has recordings of me playing all the phrases as well, so you can have that for a reference. There are a bunch of different sections to that ebook, so we're gonna check out a lick from the first section. This first section is all about blues scale licks. So let's listen and play this first lick now, and then let's talk about it after. So with this lick, what you see here is we just step up the degrees of the blue scale. We play the first degree of the blue scale, the second degree, the third degree, and then the fourth degree. And then we just step back down to the root again. And after that, we kind of accentuate the root by going back down to it a couple times and then going up into it at the end. Now with blue scale content, you don't wanna to think too much about it. You just wanna be learning good phrases with the blue scale. If you use it randomly, it's not really gonna work, but if you use it melodically like this, it's gonna sound really nice. All right, now the next lick that we're gonna check out, it's gonna be a lick from the Dorian section of this PDF package. So in general in jazz, when we think of a minor chord, the way that we're typically gonna treat it harmonically is gonna be with the Dorian mode. When a pianist or guitarist voices a minor seven chord, a lot of times they're going to be using the other degrees from the Dorian scale in order to give it more color and more harmonic variation. So you'll notice in this next lick, we use all the notes in the Dorian scale, which is a big part of actually playing melodically. If you can smoothly use a lot of stepwise motion and close tight intervals while hitting all of the notes in the scale, that's typically gonna sound pretty melodic. So that's what we see here right off the bat in that first measure, we hit all but one of the notes in the Dorian scale. You'll see on beat three, we kind of do an arpeggio, speaking in concert, of a B flat major seven chord, starting on the seven and then arpeggiating that one, three, five, seven. That's a super common thing that you can do on a minor chord. You can arpeggiate from the third of the minor chord as if it's a major seven chord. And then anticipating beat three in the second measure of this phrase, that's when we get to the one note that we hadn't hit yet. That's gonna be an E natural, which is gonna be the natural six on a minor chord. The natural six is a really nice bluesy note. So by waiting until the very end of the lick and then extending that note a little bit, it just kind of accentuates it when we get to the end of the phrase. In the last lick, we played a couple of eighth notes that resolved on the root. Here we play a couple of eighth notes that resolve on the fifth. All right, so in the next lick, we're gonna get into a section that is all about melodic chromaticism. Melodic chromaticism is essentially when you use non-diatonic notes, which just means notes outside of the scale, but you use it in a melodic way. So we're not playing outside and creating tension, and we're not just playing notes randomly outside of the scale. We're using them to smoothly embellish chord tones and scale tones in a way that's still melodic. That is, for a lot of people, the hardest step to add depth into their lines is incorporating the idea of melodic chromaticism. Harmonically speaking, it's just such a huge part of what makes jazz lines so unique. So in this phrase, you'll see what we have is essentially a really big enclosure that starts on beat two of the first measure that gets us into the third in the second measure. An enclosure is when we just use chromatic notes to go around a note. So that's what we see here. We've got a bunch of notes below and above this minor third. Then at the end here, it's a really nice sound to just end on the sixth. Again, I mentioned that sixth of a minor chord is a really bluesy note. So what we do is we just play chromatically up into that sixth to end the phrase here. And now in the last lick that we're gonna check out today, this is from the minor two, five, one section. Minor two, five, ones are very tricky. When we add a half diminished seventh chord and a dominant seven flat nine chord into the mix, we get into some really advanced territory. But one trick that you can use is you can use the harmonic minor scale all the way through this set of changes in order to construct a good line that's gonna sound melodic over this set of chord changes. So 
So what we're gonna see here is for the first two bars, every single note that's played is just inside of the G harmonic minor scale. What makes it sound melodic and not like we're just pushing random buttons over the scale is the fact that there's a lot of stepwise motion and solid voice leading. Voice leading is just a smooth transition from chord to chord using a melodic line. And so what we see here is when we get into that second measure, we're just landing smoothly on the root of the A half diminished seventh chord, stepping down into that note diatonically, which just means using the notes in the scale. When we get to B, three of that second measure, that's when we're gonna have the D7 flat nine. And what we do right off the bat is we hit the seventh and that flat nine right off the bat on that chord. Then we just step down diatonically into the third of the G minor seven. And what we do here is once again, we embrace that natural six sound, which is just so melodic and such a great way to end a phrase. That also becomes the first note that we hit outside of that G harmonic minor scale. So again, we're creating some really nice texture at the end by hitting that new note. All right, guys, so I hope you learned something from checking out those four phrases. There should be some really nice vocabulary in that for you to internalize. Anytime you learn a phrase, I highly recommend learning it in different keys. So that's what I would highly recommend doing with these phrases. There's no magic answer or secret key to getting good at improvisation, but the more you memorize content in different keys, the more it's going to improve your musicianship and you're gonna find that magically you end up soloing a lot better if you just trust that process. If you wanna get into this stuff more, you're welcome to check out the full PDF package ebook download. That's gonna have 50 licks that you can check out. These are all pretty easy and pretty sight readable. And it's also gonna have all that content written through the keys, which will be a great resource for you. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a comment for us and uh, give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.